Hello everyone. I am Mohammed Abdel Basit, lecturer of cardiology, Zagzig University. Um, I will instruct uh, this lecture approach to patient with chest pain in English language. Upon your request, actually I am not a native English speaker uh, and it will be difficult to deliver uh, the lecture in English as well as in Arabic. Uh, however, I hope you understand uh, this important lecture in dealing with patient with chest pain in the emergency room. Actually, pain is the worst thing the human could feel. Pain, when the patient in pain and come to you, the patient need urgent pain relief. He couldn't stand with the pain for long periods. For you as a cardiologist, you have to know that 60 to 80% of patients presenting to the emergency room with chest pain actually non-cardiac chest pain. To follow a stepwise algorithm or approach for management chest pain, first you have to search for guidelines. If no guidelines, search for large studies. If no small studies, then expert opinion. There is already published guidelines, American guidelines for dealing with chest pain published on 2021. So you have to follow. These guidelines established some keys to deal with patient with chest pain. Key number one, avoid using atypical chest pain. Instead, use cardiac, possible cardiac or non-cardiac. Why? As many patients with atypical chest pain, actually, they are cardiac patients and they have ischemic heart disease. So, frequently using the word atypical, often underestimate and underdiagnose patients with life-threatening ischemic heart disease. Word number two, deal with women and the men equally as woman is frequently underdiagnosed as a cardiac patient. Number three, respect the language barriers in your country. Breaking the language barriers will help you to understand the patient more and more. Number four, respect the previous investigations by the patient. If the patient had appropriate CT coronary angiogram, which is normal, this investigation is valid for two years. If the patient presented to you within two years of this investigation, which was normal, so the patient is unlikely to have ischemic heart disease. And also stress test. If the patient has adequate stress test and is normal, it is valid for one year and the patient is not likely, is unlikely to have ischemic heart disease. The rule number five, you have to respect the pattern of the pain. Either it is somatic or visceral pain or neuropathic pain. Somatic pain usually localized, usually sharp in nature, usually striking, but visceral pain usually vague pain, like ischemic pain or GIT pain, usually vague pain, diffuse pain, can't localized by one or two fingers. However, neuropathic pain usually follow single dermatome, C2, C3, C4, and so on. So, you have to know the dermatomes of the body. Many old females complain of burning pain in the head and could be cervical disc, C2. May complain of pain in one side of the chest and could be Yes, thoracic vertebral involvement. So study well the dermatomes of the body to differentiate between neuropathic pain and other types of pain. Rule number seven, you have to respect such risk stratification of the probability of ischemia. If the patient is central, pressure-like, squeezing, ribbing, heaviness, tightness, exertional or retrosternal, then the probability of ischemia is high. However, if the patient complain of sharp, 
fleeting, shifting, pleuritic, positional pain, very low probability of ischemia. Our objectives today is to define chest pain, to know the probable mechanisms of chest pain, and work up of acute chest pain in the emergency room. However, work up of recurrent chest pain in the outpatient clinic will be delivered in another lecture. As a cardiologist, we have to know that we respect all pain from jaw to umbilicus, in front or in back or in either arms. Any pain in such area must be respected as cardiac pain until proved otherwise. And all guidelines, all guidelines recommend ruling out cardiac pain first, then searching for non-cardiac pains. What are the possible mechanisms of chest pain? The chest wall is not heart and lung only. It is skin, subcutaneous tissue, breast, muscle, diaphragm, bone, vertebrae, nervous, blood vessel, heart, lung, pleura, pericardium, airway, esophagus, gallbladder, spleen, liver, and psychological. All these factors could induce chest pain, and you have to differentiate between them. For example, periherpetic neuralgia is a cause of chest pain. Zoster sign eruption is a cause of chest pain. Cancer breast could cause chest pain. Fibromyalgia, which is characterized with multiple tender points and don't respond to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, only responding to antipsychotic drugs. Disc herniation could cause neurobasic chest pain. Precordial catch syndrome frequently is the patient complain of localized stitching pain below the navel. It's a precordial catch syndrome and you have to calm the patient and prescribe some analgesics for short time. My official pain which is localized muscle tenderness in one or two trigger points and it is frequently associated with overuse exhaustion of the muscle. Also, muscle strain and dispass. Painful xiphoid syndrome. Sometimes the patient complain of tender xiphoid. Yes, tender xiphoid. And when you touch it, the patient shout of pain. Slipping grip syndrome. Some patients have slipping grip syndrome to cause painful breathing, rib fractures, costochondritis, thoracic outline syndrome. Many causes could cause chest pain other than ischemic chest pain. And again, from nervous, blood vessel, pleura, heart, could see aortic aneurysm, acute aortic syndrome, vasculitis, hypertension. Hypertension per se could cause chest pain. And the patient, when performing a coronary angiography, actually it is normal. And after controlling the blood pressure, the chest pain will be off. Pulmonary embolism, pulmonary aneurysm, hypertension, pleurisy, pneumothorax, pleural mass, pleural irritation, pericarditis, pericardial mass. On the heart, for sure, coronary heart disease, aortic stenosis, mitral valve prolapse, perimyocarditis, tachyarrhythmia, bradyarrhythmia, cardiac masses. Review the causes and the snapshots these causes in your mobile to construct a differential diagnosis thinking with the patient. Upper respiratory tract infection, bronchopneumonia, pneumonia, pneumomediastine and lung abscess, bronchogenic carcinoma, COPD, foreign body, sarcoidosis, hyperventilation syndrome. And the esophagus is very important source of chest pain, which actually vague chest pain, esophagitis, spas, dyspepsia, GERD, esophageal hypersensitivity, peptic ulcer, cancer esophagus, gastritis, hiatus hernia, gastric mass, colitis, spastic colon, especially the transverse colon, cholecystitis, liver congestion, abscess, mass, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, infarction. Psychological causes like panic disorders and anxiety could be the only cause of acute chest pain, which frequently pushes the patient to the emergency room frequently, and other types like sickle cell anemia and the patient with cancer on fluorogracil syrup. Multiple causes of chest pain. How to construct your stepwise algorithm to reach the appropriate diagnosis? You have to follow the studies, the frequency or the incidence of chest pain. 
In patients with young age, you could see that about 50% of patients has non-specific cardiac pain. Also, in old age, 50% of patients usually experience non-cardiac chest pain or non-specific chest pain. And if you see that acute myocardial infarction really constitute about less than 10% of patients presenting with chest pain and here is esophageal disorders. You have to respect this distribution and percentage, not dealing with all patients as cardiac patients. Okay? Okay. Let's start. We have to construct a stepwise algorithm of acute chest pain in the emergency room. Rule number one, if you are dealing with such patients, male patients, 58, years old, diabetic, hypertensive, and have acute chest pain for four hours. Number one, A, B, C, and D, E approach. You have to follow A, B, C, D approach for any critically ill patient presenting to the emergency room. Airway, breath, circulation, disability, exposure. And during the assessment of breathing, assess the oxygen saturation and during circulation assess pulse blood pressure and arterial blood gas and for sure you will assess pulse blood pressure on both sides and in the leg not to miss patient with aortic dissection yes disability up your score assess if the patient is alert or respond to do vocal stimuli respond to do painful stimuli or totally unresponsive and assess the random blood sugar Many patients with acute myocardial infarction frequently missed for, yes, diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis usually occur in setting of stress and there is no stressful even more than acute myocardial infarction. Exposure, rapid complete examination, you could notice any signs that refer to the cause of chest pain. For example, you could see rash in the chest and you could diagnose herpes zoster as a cause of chest pain from that sign. You could notice blood or trauma fractured rib. After A, B, C, D, E approach, you will proceed to the emergency investigations, ECG, X-ray, echocardiography, abdominal ultrasound and others. Okay? Keep in mind undiagnosed chest pain, you will go for advanced investigation. Actually, airway obstruction is not the matter here. Breathing. When assessment of breathing and auscultating the patient chest, you could auscultate crevitations with diminished reentry or you could auscultate nothing in appropriate chest wall movements, painful breathing and the oxygen saturation could reveal desaturation. If you have crepitations, the patient will have either pulmonary edema or acute heart failure, pneumonia or interstitial lung disease. How to differentiate between such three categories? Patient with acute heart failure for sure will have lower limb edema, congested neck veins, will have abnormal echocardiography as regarding systolic and diastolic function, and chest x-ray will show the typical pattern of pulmonary congestion. Pneumonia as a patient will have empty neck veins, as a patient is frequently dehydrated, normal echo, and normal cardiac shadow in chest x-ray, however, bronchopneumonic patches or pneumonic patches and the pattern for interstitial lung disease. If there is no echo av echocardiography available in the emergency room, you could insert the external jugular cannula to assess the jugular venous pressure. If the jugular venous pressure is zero, impossible the patient to have acute pulmonary edema. It will have chest cause for such accreditations. But if the jugular venous pressure it is high, the probability of acute heart failure is high. This patient has, yes, X-ray show P 
patch of chest infection and the normal cardiac shadow and this is shadow of lung abscess and this is another shadow of lung abscess if you auscultate a wheeze in the patient chest could be exacerbation of COPD could be exacerbation of asthma or could be a bronchopneumonia and take care that patients with wheeze if the patient has COPD I will give you an advice in dealing with oxygen saturation remind me this chest x-ray show patient with bronchopneumonic patches on both sides okay if the patient has diminished their entry on one side what is the matter it could be pleural effusion or pneumothorax uh, yes percussion will differentiate but chest x-ray will differentiate as well this is the pneumothorax and this is the lung collapsed on one side of the heart and this is the air fluid level obliterating the costophrenic angle which is pleural effusion yes to the right side is pleural effusion and it is pneumothorax if a clear back it will not help you in that setting inappropriate chest movement <coughs> patient may have acute neuromuscular issue or flay chest look to that patient you know that if you are breathing well you will have your abdomen rise on inspiration and collapse in expiration i think this uh, video is not working yes it worked well look in inspiration abdomen paradoxically go down not up watch your abdomen in inspiration the abdomen rise but if in inspiration the abdomen fall it means that the diaphragm is not working and this patient has bilateral diaphragmatic paralysis which could be acute neuromuscular issue giving acute dyspnea acute chest pain and desaturation okay patient with painful breathing with or without tenderness it could be pleurisy or musculoskeletal issue okay if the patient is desaturated give oxygen if the oxygen saturation below 90 percent give oxygen mask if the oxygen saturation is above 90 percent don't give oxygen please and if the patient has COPD please avoid oxygen saturation to be near 100 percent why as the patient depend on hypoxia for respiratory center stimulation as the patient has chronic elevation of the co2 level co2 level is chronically elevated so the respiratory center is desensitized from the CO2 level. The only drive for respiration is hypoxia. If you correct the hypoxia and the oxygen saturation reach 100%, actually you will induce respiratory center depression and more CO2 retention and the respiratory failure okay the optimum oxygen saturation for patient with COPD is from 88 percent to 92 percent excellent circulation pulse blood pressure abg if you are watching pulse examination you could reveal bradycardia and diagnose heart block and ecg or tachyarrhythmia as a cause of chest pain and you will diagnose an ECG. You could detect an equal pulse. Pulse volume is big on one side and weak on the other side, and this could be the sign referring and raising your concern about acute aortic dissection. Blood pressure and this X-ray in patient with an equal pulse actually has aortic aneurysm that must raise your concern about excellent aortic dissection. Blood pressure could be normal could the patient have hypotension and shock cardiogenic or hypovolemic or septic or obstructive 
the patient has congested inferior vena cava in echocardiography or rising jugular venous pressure or central venous pressure, sure the patient will have either cardiogenic or obstructive shock, pulmonary embolism, for example. If the patient has empty neck veins, zero CVB, zero jugular venous pressure, collapsed inferior vena cava in echocardiography, it will be either hypovolemic and septic shock and will deal urgently with that patient. Hypovolemic septic shock will give fluids and the other type will give actually vasopressors, then correcting the cause. Severe hypertension, the only sign could be present in the patient is severe hypertension and chest pain. After correcting the blood pressure, the chest pain will be off. And even if the patient proceeded to coronary angiography, percent of this patient will have normal coronary angiography and hypertension will be the only cause of chest pain. Unequal blood pressure will be dealt as unequal bulbs in the pattern of our tectoid section. Arterial blood gas is very important in the initial assessment of all patients critically ill. Could be normal, could have metabolic acidosis, which will refer to lactic acidosis in shocked patients, or diabetic ketoacidosis in diabetic patient, or acute renal failure. One patient presented to us one day with acute chest pain, and the patient has frequent admissions with acute coronary syndrome. But this time, EBG was not performed. At night, the chest pain persists despite appropriate anti-ischemic drugs. But when EBG performed, we detected severe metabolic acidosis. Upon revision of the patient creatinine level, creatinine level it was 10. The patient go for dialysis, not for the CAS lab. And after dialysis, the patient has relief of chest pain, and the actual the patient was in heuremic pericarditis, which is an indication of urgent dialysis. Respiratory acidosis of the patient has COPD as my exacerbation. Actually, we will have respiratory acidosis. Always watch the bicarb level in the patient. If the patient in arterial blood gas has bicarb level above 30, this must raise your concern about COPD. And if the patient is in COPD, you have to deal with oxygen saturation cautiously. Excellent. Respiratory alkalosis could be a sign of an anxiety. Disability. Patient is alert or disturbed conscious level. If the patient has disturbed conscious level, it could be diabetic ketoacidosis, diabetic coma, or uremic encephalopathy, or cause of shock, or cause of CO2 narcosis in patient with COPD and asthma exacerbation. And random blood sugar will be high in patient with diabetic K2 acidosis. Exposure. You could notice chest wall injury in exposure, herpetic rash, epigastric tenderness, which could be a sign of peptic ulcer or gastritis, positive Murphy sign in patient with cholecystitis, jaundice in patient with cholecystitis, surgical abdomen and GIT perforation, breast mass, ulcer, nipple retraction, will raise your concern about cancer breast, lymph nodes everywhere, deep venous thrombosis will raise your concern about pulmonary impulse. This is the rash of a patient with acute chest pain and the patient actually have, yes, herpes zoster. And this patient has mondor disease which is superficial thrombophlebitis causing chest pain and red tube, yes. It is actually superficial thrombophilbitis of the veins on the chest. Okay. If you finished the ABCD approach as a cardiologist or non-cardiologist, you will have ECG and not 12 lead ECG only. 12 lead ECG, posterior leads V7, 8 and 9 and 
right precordial it's excellent you have to complete the ECG examination observation the ECG will direct you either to STEMI and you will proceed to the cath lab and guidelines of STEMI or diffuse ST elevation and the PR depression which is consistent with pericarditis or ST depression T with inversion especially if the ECG show dynamic changes and you will follow non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome guidelines and non-diagnostic ECG or arrhythmia, arrhythmia will follow the guidelines of arrhythmia if the patient has non-diagnostic chest pain, you will order cardiac enzymes to rule out patient with acute coronary syndrome and the normal ECG. Okay, and don't forget to perform posterior leads to identify isolated posterior myocardial infarction. The patient with negative cardiac enzyme 0 and 3 protocol, 0, 1, 2, 3 protocol, actually low risk of ischemia, but keep in mind that there are life-threatening non-cardiac causes you have to rule out before safely discharging the patient to the home. Okay. <coughs> you performed ECG, and ECG is normal. <clears throat> and the first set of enzyme is negative and you are waiting for the second set after three hours you have another options meticulous history taking from the patient of the, or the relative chest x-ray echocardiography lab and others okay for example echocardiography is very helpful especially if the patient is in hemodynamic compromise or in top of ischemic heart disease, okay? And it will detect cardiac and often non-cardiac patient or could detect cardiac non-ischemic cause of chest pain. This patient have acute myocardial infarction, but actually upon auscultating the murmur on the chest, and the echocardiography revealed excellent apical VSR. The patient in the echo could have acute mitral regurgitation. <coughs> and you know that acute mitral regurgitation is diagnosed with severe mitral regurgitation and the normal LV dimensions. However, the patient will be in hemodynamic compromise and acute pulmonary edema. This patient with acute myocardial infarction that have pseudo aneurysm pseudo aneurysm from the lv with narrow neck and this is a color doubler showing the flow from the lv to the aneurysm during system this patient could have cardiac tamponade even if the amount of fluid in the pericardium is small but if it is accumulated acutely and rapidly it will cause tamponade and the dilated incollapsible inferior vena cava in patients with cardiac tamponades and this patient show acute aortic regurgitation. you could see this uh, patient with normal LV dimensions and acute aortic regurgitation and could be the cause of chest pain or a complication of chest pain especially if the patient has aortic dissection like that patient has a flab of aortic dissection yes in the aorta and sure this patient will have aortic regurgitation Echo could reveal dilated right side of the heart, making D-shaped LV, dilated right side, and akinesia of the free wall of the right ventricle. All these signs in favor of, yes, acute pulmonary embolism. You could see thrombus in the right side of the heart dancing, and this is patient, yes, have acute pulmonary embolism. And this patient has cardiac tamponade and the swinging heart in this massive pericardial effusion. This patient is valvular heart disease and they have fracture corti and it could be the cause of chest pain. This patient has acute aortic regurgitation with normal LV dimensions. Echo could detect non-cardiac causes. Yes, it is a case of pleural effusion detected in routine echocardiography examination. Okay. This a case report published 
that echocardiography detected the cause of rare chest pain is 19 years old female presented to the emergency department with chest pain, palpitation and generalized weakness. The patients were present for two months but had become more prominent during the prior week. The chest pain worsened the week before presenting to the emergency room and uh, the patient presented to the emergency room one week ago and diagnosed with anxiety. The patient didn't report any other previous medical history or surgical history, denied any familial history, and uh, reported marijuana use several days earlier, heart rate 126, blood pressure 170 over 85, the patient is tachypneic, respiratory rate 17, however, no fever, no hypoxia, and the patient is anxious. Patient exhibited heart rate lability. When she is alone, heart rate is 90 to 100. When medical staff go to her, the heart rate become 120 and 140, and could be a sign of yes, an anxiety. However, routine echocardiography revealed a mass in the echo. CT was not obtained with cardiac protocol and the CT performed no masses uh, appeared. However, routine echocardiography detected mass TE performed and the patient was referred to cardiothoracic consultation. Echo number one after ECG in the initial assessment of chest pain. ECG, then echo. Excellent. History skills could differentiate the cause of chest pain. Anginal symptoms, retrosternal chest pain, discomfort, heaviness, tightness, pressure, constriction, squeezing. However, sharp chest pain that increase with inspiration or lying spine, unlikely to be ischemic. Instead, it will be acute pericarditis, pleurisy, musculoskeletal causes. Anginal symptoms build up over a few minutes. However, if the patient is complaining of sudden, severe chest pain, it is usually dissection, not ischemia. The ischemic pain, patient, the pain started at uh, 9 a.m. and the gradually increased, 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 increased at 10 it, it reached severe pain. However, a water dissection patient experienced severe chest pain from the first minute of pain. Sudden severe chest pain. Fleeting chest pain is unlikely to be cardiac pain. Uh, if the patient is complaining of localized pain that could be localized by one finger unlikely to become myocardial ischemia. However, ribbing chest pain, the worst chest pain in my life, it will be dissection. In chronic patient, exertional pain and emotional stress will trigger anginal pain. Uh, acute coronary syndrome often if the patient experiences pain on minimal exercise. However, positional pain, pain on going to the left side, pain to on going to the right side, usually musculoskeletal. Relief with nitroglycerin must not be used as a clue to ischemic heart disease. Why? Sophageal spasms will respond to nitrates. You can't differentiate using nitrates as a relieving factor of chest pain. Okay, A, B, C, D, E approach. Then, yes, ECG. Then, echo. Then, brief history taking. Then, chest X-ray. Chest X-ray often differentiate between cardiac, pulmonary, and thoracic causes of symptoms. This patient has acute chest pain, and you notice air under diaphragm. 
It could be a sign of life-threatening GIT perforation and the esophageal perforation, and the esophageal perforation will cause chest pain. This patient has black shadows of hair in the mediastinum. It is no mediastinum in patient with life-threatening esophageal perforation. Again, this is patient who is air under the frame, which is yes, GIT perforation. So chest X-ray is very important. This patient has yes, chest pain and the spontaneous pneumothorax, jet black shadow here, and this collapsed lung, slightly collapsed lung. This patient with spontaneous pneumothorax as a cause of chest pain. Okay. A, B, C, D, E approach, yes, ECG, echo, history, chest x-ray. You have a lab to perform. D-dimer could be elevated in patient with pulmonary embolism. CBC, retex, and the blood film could detect sickle cell anemia. Liver functions and increase the bilirubin level will, will raise your concern about biliary causes. Kidney and acute renal failure and uremic pericarditis. You have to respect the cardiac causes. First, rule out cardiac causes, then proceed to the non-cardiac causes. If it's still unexplained chest pain, despite all effort you performed in the emergency room, think in esophagus, a heart pain, regurgitation, history of non-steroidal, relief with antacid, it will direct it to some sort of gastritis, GERD, Yes, as a cause of chest pain. So give empirical acid suppression. One of my colleagues was complaining of chest pain with normal ECG, normal echo, normal cardiac enzyme, and he decided to go for coronary angiography. However, I decided to start empirical acid suppression and the proton pump infusion, which aborted the chest pain. And the patient had gastritis and GERD. But there is warning symptoms that could direct it to even beyond the empirical acid suppression like dysphagia, odinophagia, painful swallowing, GIT bleeding, unexplained iron deficiency anemia, weight loss, recurrent vomiting. You have to go for upper GIT endoscopy. It will direct you to life threatening cause like a surgical tear, excellent, like peptic ulcer about to perforate, like mess so if you have warning symptom of um, GIT causes proceed with upper GIT endoscopy this is important point if the patient is still unexplained psychiatric causes are not malingering causes the patient really complain and they really have disease Apply this DSM-5 criteria. If you collect four of these criteria, the patient could have a panic attack, and you could refer to excellent to specialist psychiatrist for proper management. Screenshot that patient numbness, fear of dying, fear of losing control, feeling dizzy, nausea, chest pain, feeling of choking, sensation of shortness of breath, sweating, um, pain in the head, hot flushes. All of this, if you collect four of these criteria, the patient may have panic attack, and it is a very important slide to keep in your mobile. For example, this case report published. 81 years old female with past medical history of atrial fibrillation and she received cardiac ablation and the own dabigatrin presented with sudden severe chest pain that immediately started after drinking juice. On arrival to the emergency department was hemodynamically stable, cardiac respiratory abdominal examination was unremarkable and the EKG will basically laboratory testing were normal. Uh, EKG showed normal sinus rhythm without ST deviation. Hemoglobin was only 10 and could be normal in such old age. INR 1.6, white blood cells 11.3. Platelet troponin liver enzymes were normal, chest X ray, no acute abnormality. Due to concern of aortic aneurysm for sudden severe chest pain, which is indicator of 
aortic dissection, she performed CT and geography, which revealed distal impaction of her esophagus. Oh. Performing upper endoscopy revealed external compression of the esophagus. The esophagus is compressed from outside. Repeating the CT of the esophagus revealed the large intramural esophageal hematoma. Dissecting esophageal hematoma is not aortic dissection, it is esophageal dissection. And the dabigatran was discontinued and the hematoma resolved over three months. The lesson here, if you are in dogs and no explanation of the patient presentation, you have to advance your investigation. Again, A, B, C, D, E approach. After finishing that, you have ECG, you have echo, you have X-ray, you have appropriate history taking from the patient or relative, abdominal ultrasound and others. Others could be CT, CT angiography, CT orthography, MRI, upon CT pulmonary angiography, duplex, upon your concern. Don't leave the patient with undiagnosed cause of chest pain, as the patient could deteriorate rapidly. Many patients diagnosed with pulmonary sequestration couldn't be detected unless with advanced imaging. Patient with gastric valve loss, patient with hiatus hernia as a cause of chest pain, couldn't be detected unless you perform it CT, 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 and you MRI advanced imaging. If the patient is non-diagnosed with the conventional way and is still undiagnosed, please go for advanced imaging. <sighs> Mission finished. I hope you understand. If anyone has any question regarding such topic, please send it me on WhatsApp, on email, on comment in the Facebook, comment on the YouTube channel. Please subscribe and your feedback is very important to me to decide to proceed in English or to back in Arabic and thank you.